how you got a stroke pedal on the most targeted citizen. I'm trying to get the words right while at the same time holding my emotions back because I'm angry. I'm very, very angry at this very moment. I, um, when I was six years old, my mother and father just bought, purchased a brand new house. Just getting used to the neighborhood, just started making friends. And my mother and father decided right then and there that the Lord called them to drive all the way across the country, go to Bible college, and become preachers. They will admit in their later lives that they jumped the gun, that they didn't do it in God's time. They just ran with it. <clears throat> Back in the early 80s, which is about the time my mother and father decided to go on this route with their lives, the prosperity gospel was blowing up. Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagin, Fred Price, Marilyn Hickey, um, just numerous, numerous people just running wild with press prosperity gospel. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have everything you ever dreamed of. Now, I'm not prescribing any ill intent to my mother and father because, I mean, they don't have anything to do with me anyway, but I watched a video a couple years ago about Kenneth Hagen. If you don't know that name, he has the Rama Bible Training Center. It's a Christian college. Um... There's a couple of other ones out there in Texas and Oklahoma. There's a big one, and I can't get the name. Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts University. And this is the home of Prosperity Gospel. This is really where it really began. Um, there was um, Jimmy and Tammy Faye Baker. They were in North Carolina. All these people with this God wants you to be rich, prosperity trash. And my mother and father decided, God told us that's where we got to go to this college. Now, a few years back, I watched a video of Kenneth Hagin in his church. And appalled is an understatement to what I saw in the video. I wish I could bring it up to you, but I'm not allowed to edit videos. But in this video, these people are laughing crazily, just like they're all insane. And he's swinging his coat and people are falling out and giggling and laughing and everybody's jumping up and down and just like they were, like the Holy Spirit was moving and making them act a fool. You see, everything with the Lord is orderly. There's no confusion when it comes to God. And that's that's a good sign of discernment. If, it's, if it doesn't feel right and you need to, you need to discern it carefully. That's going to be where I'm going with this. So I don't want to say that my mother and father saw this video of these rich people getting rich because prosperity pastors are at the top of the pyramid scheme. Send me money. Send me $19.95. And if you keep doing that and God decides because you showed with your faith this money that you're going to be rich too, well... That only, that only works when you're at the top of the pyramid, the top of the Ponzi scheme. So I don't know if my mother and father saw that video and said, look at these people. They're in the spirit and they're getting rich. Let's go to Bible college. I, I don't know. And I don't want to prescribe that to my mother and father. So within a day of having this brand new, beautiful house, kids getting just to the neighborhood, they go put the house on the market rent a U-Haul trailer and stuff me, my two si stuff me in the full board and my two sisters in mom and dad's lap and drive across the country 18 hours straight to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. <laughs> Literally upended my life. Now, six years old, I couldn't have that much going on. 
but it was the beginning of never having roots, never being in a place where I can acclimate, a place where I can make friends, a place where I could call home for any length of time, which can result to serious behavior issues. So my dad would work the first year of college, I think my dad went and my mom worked at night at Safeway. And then the next year of college, my mom went and then my dad worked doing something else. It was varying schedules, but we lived under the poverty level. They always, they didn't have barely enough money to feed us. My grandfather would grow a garden and he would bring, we we literally lived off green beans for years. All I ate was canned green beans. It's all we had. Um... They'd rent two bedroom apartments. My sisters had a bedroom. Mom and dad had a bedroom. And I was shoved on the back porch. In Oklahoma, it gets 115 degrees in the summertime. In the wintertime, it gets down to zero and below zero. And my bedroom was a screened in back porch. Many, many nights. Kids nowadays will never understand this. Mason will never know what this is. I remember going to bed so hungry that it hurt but God was telling them what to do when God is behind it it works out when God not to say there's not going to be struggle but when God is behind it it goes for his glory It, it it produces what God wills for it to produce So all these years we spent out there in poverty, under the poverty line, we finally, they graduate and we come back home. My dad's searching for a church. He finds, he he tries to start a little church and he gets it going and he finds a ministry where the pastor, a well-known pastor around here is retiring and my dad takes over and my dad would take our bill money and our house to keep the church alive. He didn't take the he didn't take a salary, but he he spent every dime that could have fed me and my sisters. And and let me let me say this: my sisters did not do without. I went hungry; they did not. Christmas and birthdays, we voted on what we wanted as children. Well, when it's two girls and one boy, you can almost guarantee who's going to win that vote. So to say that I was neglected is an understatement. To say I was severely abused is an understatement. So I don't know if my mother and father seen the blasphemy that I've seen because the internet went around back then. We didn't know the ins and outs of everything like we do today. We've got so much information to take in today. Uh, You should be able to make your judgment by anybody. You watch enough videos, you will know them by their fruit. Every once in a while, I've got a worm crawling out of my apple. But overall, I've got good roots. I try to be as godly as I can. So with that, I've been like Kenneth Haig, Kenneth Copeland. You know Kenneth Copeland, the richest Christian preacher in the world, worth a billion dollars, has 16 jets. He bought Tyler Perry's jet for like $16.8 million, or 60. Was it 60 billion? Might have been 60 million. I've been to his church and it was a sight to see and it was overwhelming. All these rich people, this huge place with 10, 15,000 people. It's amazing. And I watched him as I grew up. I went through my, my, my trials and tribulations of being a re- in rebellion. But I would still watch, even growing up, and I got away from it and, and, and started getting right back on the path. I'd watch his sermons, watch it, watch it, and I kept getting a hitch in my stomach. What's, what is this I'm feeling? What is this? I just, it, just felt, it felt wrong. It felt dirty. And then the Inside Edition video came out where the girl, where the lady with Inside Edition interviewed Kenneth Copeland at the airport. And she's like, well, you said you don't want to fly in a plane with a, with a bunch of other demons. And he's like, and, and just you could see the demon literally in him. So that was a big eye opener to the heretics that we have in this world. 
It's disgusting. Uh, Jesse Duplantis, Fred Price, uh, Freflo Dollar, Marilyn Hickey, uh, Betty, what, not Betty White, Paula White. Uh, who's the other one? There's the other woman. Oh my gosh, I've got her name in there, her books in there too. But the ungodly amounts of multi, multi millions of dollars these people have amassed by conning people and robbing people. So it's pretty easy to tell that someone is evil. Our discernment should tell us that these people are evil, and it does. Once you research and you look at Joel Osteen and think, well, he's a Christian. There's nothing godly about Joel Osteen. He is a pop psychology skinny jean pep talker. That's all he does. He's a motivational speaker. He is not a godly man at all. You got to ask yourself how these people amass so much, so much money off suckers, sucker Christians just looking to get rich. No, 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 no. There's a lot of illegal activity going on with all these private jets. Why would somebody fly, choose to fly a private jet to be in business? Well, that's because they're flying something on that jet. You just can't fly on regular public companies, airplanes, if you know what I mean. Trafficking in humans, I would say. So knowing that we need discernment with these people, because I had a comment tonight by a very long time subscriber, and it kind of hurt my feelings, but not really. But his comment, because he misunderstood what I was saying, is something like typical response from a Christian, because... Christians get judged more than anybody. We are the easiest target. There, no one stands up for us. No one defend us. It's literally, uh, uh, and uh, David, oh my gosh, if I didn't want to know his name, David Lynn from Canada. He calls it Christophobes, people that are scared of Christianity, people that attack Christianity, Christophobes. <clears throat> so it's difficult enough without the sinful ones in this world attacking people like me when they see me sin <clears throat> on video and then 99.9% .9 of the time I'm trying to be a godly Christian man. But all they can see is that one cuss word. That's why I leave it out there to let you know that I'm not pulling any punches. I sin. If my one four-letter word is the worst sin in my life, you need to re-examine yours because that's the worst sin in my life besides not living in faith because it's hard to be faithful when you deal with what I deal with daily. So discernment, good thing. The term heresy hunters is what we're going to talk about now. I told you guys about the Ashbury, Kentucky College, the revival that's been happening for, I think, nine or ten days now. These people, God has landed. God has surrounded that place, and people are being delivered. They're being, and I told you about the deliverance services at my church. We've been, we've had deliverance services every night for a year and like two weeks, a full year and two weeks, every Sunday night, wherein they're casting out demons. And you don't have to believe it, but I'm telling you, the evil ones in this world know that demons are real. They know that the sound of the name of Jesus Christ makes hell shake every time you say it. With this revival, which hasn't happened in America in a very long time, and I'm telling you, there have been revivals in this country that lasted years that saw Christianity blow up and blossom and bloom all across the country and really saved our nation. God moves and has and is moving on this campus. The Holy Spirit has fallen down on this place and people are being saved. Young people are feeling the presence of God. And then all these YouTube heresy hunters lay into the place. I told you the number one heresy hunter out there is Justin Peters. There's another, there's about four or five of them and all they do is pick apart somebody else's sermons and these are usually the cessationist people who don't believe in miracles and think miracles die with the apostles, that Jesus is the only one that cast, that, that cast out demons, and that there's that they don't talk to Jesus anymore because Jesus quit talking to people. These are the people who denounce anything that is evidence of God working, and it makes me furious. 
the first one I saw, well, not the first one, but one of the ones I saw last night on YouTube as I scroll through, because I was watching, it's, you can actually look at the revival going on right now. It's on a li on like four or five different live streams where people are actually recording live free time right now. The people right there in the same building, in the same college, they're all they're praising God nonstop. I saw one pop up there last night having a video. His name was Kerrigan Skelly. I know it sounds like a fake name, Kerrigan Skelly. And he is a street preacher. And he just got started a couple years ago, but I'm going to try to keep this as professional as I can. But he's what I consider, and, it, and listen, it takes a lot of balls to be a street preacher. I've done it. Um, I did it for a few weeks, a few days, a couple days. And it takes a lot to stand right there and, and, and shout the name of Jesus. It, it takes a lot. Um, but he goes out and does it, so it wouldn't be right of me to criticize him doing it. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't Monday morning quarterback it, but using our discernment, we're supposed to judge things like that. Now, here's the problem. All these people, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that's the only unpardonable sin. That's what people think, and this is what I thought for years, that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is cussing out the Holy Spirit. Because there's been many times in my life where I'm sticking my middle finger up to God and cussing God for all his work and cussing Jesus and cussing this and cussing that because I was an evil person. I was looking for somebody to blame my crap on. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is a whole different thing. It is not cussing the Holy Spirit. It is not, and it's taken years because, listen, I'm still not 99.9% .9 sure that I'm going to go to heaven, and I pray that I do. And I think that's the fear of God that we're all supposed to have. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is ascribing the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil. Just like uh, I told you about the, 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 the priest and the Pharisees when Jesus was casting demons. You know that Jesus cast out more demons than he did perform miracles? Did you know that? You know that, right? He cast out demons everywhere he went. He was Demons were jumping out of people as Jesus walked through. Even the woman with the issue of blood, all she did was touch the hem of his garment and the issue of blood that she had for 12 years, dying every day, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. After 12 years, she just has enough faith to touch the hem of her, his garment. And Jesus felt the power and energy run out of her, run out of him into her, and she was healed instantly. That's, if you haven't seen the, the, the show Chosen on the Angel Network, you need to download it. It's free. It is amazing. It's remarkable. It puts you right there with Jesus and what was going on at the time. They accused Jesus of using the power of Beelzebub to cast out the demons of Beelzebub. Now, that is blasphemy. You can, can you imagine now looking back and thinking the, the Pharisee that accused Jesus of using the devil to cast out demons? Ooh, he's got hell to pay. Well, here are all these YouTube heresy hunters, just like because my, my, my pastor is as hated as I am on the internet. He just has a bigger platform to be hated. These heresy hunters come every day attacking my church because of the miracles that are happening uh, my pastor did a sermon a couple months ago, and I just heard a, ver a, a, a scripture that they read a minute ago. Let me let me get that scripture, and I'll read it to you. So, back when we started doing deliverance ministry at my church, my pastor caught a lot of flack. The Bible says that when people are afflicted with disease and illness that it is a spirit of infirmity. That means it is a spirit. It is a demonic spirit of illness, sickness, infirmities. The Bible says that Jesus gives us the power to cast them out in his name. So the, the verse I want to read is Matthew 10.1. And I'm going to prove my point to you that that's what we're supposed to do. For all the people that say, oh, you can't cast out devils. Okay. The Bible says differently. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he being Jesus, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease.
It said all manner, not not some. It didn't say you can just cast out a sore throat or just cast out a, an acne issue. All manner of illness, sickness, and disease. With our own eyes at my church, children with autism were being delivered instantly. Children with autism were being delivered. Now, when my pastor said, if your children have autism and you have the faith of a mustard seed is all that's required, God says, bring your children with autism, bring your kid, people with cancer, death, blind, bring them here for deliverance. And I'm going to tell you, because I'm not going to lie to you, people during this revival at my church and many other churches around the globe are being set free from autism. Another lady, she had she terminal cancer, a huge tumor in her body. She got, she did everything in her power to go states away to my church for deliverance service. She got delivered, went to the doctor a day or two later, and the doctor could find no cancer in her body. Completely healed. We've seen, I shared a video on my page the other day, that a young girl, 18, 19 years old, who could not see, went to church to a deliverance service. They laid hands on her and prayed. And the first time they prayed, she got a little sight back. The next time she prayed, she got a little bit more sight back. The next time they prayed for her, she got color back with the sight and here she is on the phone, Mom, I can't see. And her mom's like, what are you talking about? You can see, you can't see, you're blind. No, Mother, I can see. I was delivered. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to hell heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the cessationists like Justin Peters, and I'm pretty sure Garrig, Kerrigan Skillyhead or whoever he may be, they don't believe in Jesus because if you believe in Jesus and you have to believe his word, it says that he gave us all. Now people say, well, he was talking to his disciples specifically. No, he was talking to all of us. So to get back to my point, during this service, one of my church sisters was there who has been trained in deliverance ministries and you can pick up the video online right now you can go see it where a demon manifests sitting there and, and it happens all the time in our church people just walk into our church just walk there and before the service starts because the holy spirit has fallen onto our church before the before the service starts people are manifesting demons right then and there service is going on my pastor's preaching they're singing people are falling out Demons coming out of them right and left. Trust me, I know. I, I saw it with my own eyes. People puking here and puking there. I mean, I wish that I would have got it because, but I, my, my head was in it. I was too worried about seeing the other people that needed deliverance that I fought it off having it. And if you don't do deliverance just right, you will stop it, just like the person being delivered. If, if, if they're praying for me for deliverance, I cannot speak the name of Jesus out of my mouth because it's got to come out here. The demon's got to come from here, down here, out. So if I'm saying Jesus, boom, I push it back down. They, they cast it out, it comes up. It's backing down because they flee from the name of Jesus. As you can see on the video, this woman starts manifesting a demon. But everyone around says that she went into a seizure. And this place is crowded and they're, they're, they're holding her slap back like this right here, seized up. Well, one of the women who was one of my sisters in Christ, she runs from the back because she's trained in deliverance. They, they, they pick the woman up and she's like stiff as a board, seized up, put her in the floor and she runs out in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You come out, you come out devil in the name of Jesus. That woman was delivered right there and then. Now all the people around there, most people in revival, they're, they're, they don't know anything about Jesus. They, they're just 
It's the Holy Spirit that tells them to get there, and they get there, and they get delivered, but they don't understand it. They don't see it. We see Freddy Krueger. We see Jason. We see these demonic movies every single day. They want to flood us with the evil, but they don't want to flood us with the power to defeat the evil. They don't want you to know the power in the name of Jesus. So, a revival is enough to get the heresy hunters to chase you down and validate, to put their stamp of approval like Justin Peters likes to do in a very condescending way. Well, I'm just going to be as godly as I can. And Justin Peters, you need to go research him. He's a guy that rolls around in a wheelchair or on his little sticks. He's handicapped. Uh, he is a cessationist. He worships John MacArthur as if John MacArthur is God. He goes around the world... Um, exposing all these heretics. Now, the, he's right on a lot of them, like the Prosperity Gospels, the sooth sellers. He's right on them, but then he comes after my pastor as well. You can't cast out a demon. That's that's of the devil. Well, he's guilty of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, so he had to chime in. I watched the first two minutes of the video where he was, my thoughts on Asbury. You know what's disgusting? And you know why it's so rare that there is revival in America? You know why? Because every time God shows his power and his ability to save mere mortals like us, every time God brings the Holy Spirit down to rock the place, we got heresy hunters saying, I just don't think that's God. Mm, it is infuriating. Imagine these people that don't know anything about Jesus and they're there to be delivered. Just think of them right now sitting at home trying to find anything godly on, t on YouTube. Anything they can see about God and de delivering them from demons and, and devils and sickness and, and disease. Imagine them thirsting for the word of God and they pop up on a page like Justin Peters. Well, I just don't know if it's actually a revival. Two minutes in and I'm furious. We're supposed to use our discernment. But you need to understand, Justin Peters, no matter how godly you think you are, and I'm telling you specifically, Justin Peters, because on the holy map, you got me beat by a million miles, but I'll tell you what you don't have me beat is I'm not blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to sit here and say when God comes down and delivers the thousands of people that have visited Ashbury College, I'm not going to be the one to question God. I'll leave that all up to you. How dare anyone criticize what's going on? If you don't have the discernment that God and the Holy Spirit gives us to know that that is real, it is factual, it's happening, and it is alive as we are, then you should step down away from your YouTube channel and reevaluate. For one, if you don't believe Jesus still talks to his children, you got a problem. Two, if you see a work of the Lord Jesus Christ that's happening in Ashbury right now and you question it, I think you need to revisit your faith and ask God to forgive you. Because apparently if you don't think God still talks to his people and God still ain't delivering demons through the name of Jesus, you don't have the faith that it takes for the size of a mustard seed as commanded by Jesus himself. I am so tired of God work. We beg to see these miracles and people like Justin Peters who is pissed off at the world and pissed off at God because God won't heal his legs so he can walk. Well, God didn't heal me and I got to ride around in this wheelchair. Then God ain't going to heal nobody. You see, people like Justin Peters have made a bargain. Made a bargain. God, I'll, I'll worship you. I'll worship you. But I just, I just, I just can't go all the way because here I am still rolling around in my wheelchair. I'm traveling the globe criticizing everybody else looking holier than thou. But God, you didn't save me. If Jesus isn't speaking to you, I think you got the wrong number. If you don't believe miracles are still happening on this earth today, you don't know the God of the Bible. I'm a former addict. I'm a former alcoholic. 
I'm a former sex fiend, former pornography addict. I'm a former abuser. I'm a former liar. I'm a former every... I used to worship the devil. I would cast spells on people, and I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that when I cast a spell on people, they died. People died from the spells that I cast. When I tell you that God, a preacher's kid, me, a preacher's kid, at six years old, I'm delivering people from the closet of my house, but the devil moved in and stole me from God for many, many years. The best years of my life, Satan stole from me. I'm telling you, if I can walk away from all of that, sticking every drug on the planet in my body, drinking everything, walking and rolling in my body, screwing all the women in the world. I could, for spite, having six, six, seven, ten women a day, not exaggerating. If I can tell you that I walked away from all that one time, cold turkey, not, a, not, not even a look back, that's a miracle. Holding my dead friends in my hands. Holding my fiance, cutting her down from the rope. Holding her in my arms and trying to breathe life back into her. And still, sitting in my house for two months with a sawed-off shotgun in my mouth. Trying my best to kill myself. Being dead three times, flatline, no pulse, no nothing. And I'm still here, but you're going to tell me that God doesn't do miracles anymore? Justin Peters, you better repent. You need to listen to my pastor, Pastor Greg Locke, Global Vision Bible Church, where he goes through every single time in the Bible that Jesus says to cast out demons in his name. Every time that Jesus cast out demons, every time there's a miracle that Jesus still says that we have the power in our hands through the name of Jesus to cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you don't believe that, you do not know the God of the Bible. And because you don't know the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible, when it's time for you to stand before him, will say, turn from me, I know you not. I am a miracle as sinful and disgusting to God that I am, I am a miracle. To think that I am 47 years old standing in this dump where I've had everything in the world I ever wanted and it was all stolen from me. I could be the most bitter person in the world, yet I'm standing here at 2 o'clock in the morning telling you that God is doing miracles every second of every day. And if you don't believe that Jesus, the God of the Bible, and the Holy Spirit still not working miracles today, you have a long eternity in hell to go. My greatest fear is that I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That is my greatest fear. But my fear of blaspheming the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with me doubting him. It has nothing to do with me cussing or yelling at him or denying him. It's not saying that the work of God is the work of the devil. Imagine how many souls are on the blood of all the souls that you turned away from because of your